In this video, you'll learn about tuna fishing down in San Diego, California. I show you some night jigging as well as some day fishing with a fly line and give you some tips and tricks in terms of what to do and what not to do. All right, we're headed on. Let's go. So my fishing buddies and I decided to go on a overnight tuna fishing trip. And the first thing we needed to do was to get some bait and then we would go 60 miles offshore to do some night jigging. Let's go. Go in there, don't G.I. Joe death grip it. Just put your thumb over her eyeball so she doesn't see it coming. And you just stick the hook right through the cart. You don't want scales all over your pole. Okay, that's a nose hook. Okay, and I'm just gonna take the hook right there by the pectoral fin, rinse the hand, flip it in the water. Don't worry about casting right away, just get the bait in the water. Okay? Yeah. So, instead of taking the, if you wanna change out your bait, Instead of coming up here and taking the bait off with your hands, just do this. Crack it on the top. Come up. Crack the whip. Okay? Come over here, bottom of the deck, tip to the sky, hook in hand. Just like so. Collar hook, kind of bend her head just like that. You go right between the gill plate and the body. The smaller baits is kind of hard to do. Okay? Just like that. Collar hook. I only like doing that with the bigger baits though. So I rinse the hand. Okay, I'm done. I put the hook, where do I put the hook? Down here by the reel somewhere, okay? You drove 60 miles offshore and I'm using this glow-in-the-dark jig to try and do some night jigging for some bluefin tuna. And the captain will tell you how deep you should be dropping your jig and you try to keep it in that strike zone to entice a bite. Some of these fish could be hanging out between 150 to 200 feet deep and I found that it would have been useful if I had color coded line that would tell me how many feet I've already let out. Um, that was a big learning lesson. No? I don't want it. I want to do it up. Can we use your rods for the fly line? Hey, hand me some fly line! So one of the things that I should have done here was remove my gloves because the gloves actually ruined the scales of the fish. So when you bait, you don't want to bait your hooks with gloves on. Because oh. it just knocks the scales right off. Ah, okay. So this is called the fly line technique and uh, basically there's a floating kelp patty that we're passing over and you just want the bait to uh, swim by itself without a weight and ideally there's either some yellowtail or tuna hanging around the kelp bed trying to pick off some bait fish. And of course I lose the bait fish as I try to toss it. So yeah, we have like four or five rods down uh, in the water near this kelp paddy, but there's just nothing that's biting, nothing. You move on and found another kelp paddy, so if you see on the top left of the screen, you can see the kelp paddy over there. I'll so again, at this kelp paddy, nothing.
So we were able to find another kelp patty as you can see on the left there. And again, everyone's just dropping in their fly line, this free floating bait that's going wherever it wants to go. And hopefully there's some predator waiting around trying to get a free meal. And so again, we worked that kelp patty for maybe five to 10 minutes and uh, we're calling it over here. We're gonna go and find um, some other spots. So this was another spot and as you'll notice like when you're on a tuna boat and this was a smaller boat but even on the larger charter boats there's a lot of line management right so you got to go over people you got to make sure that your lines don't tangle so um, it was uh, quite interesting to learn how to do that and uh, finding the best spot on the boat so that your lines don't get tangled. So we all got excited for a minute there. There's a big sunfish over here. And you know, it's just waving, teasing us, telling us there's no fish around here. <laughs> so we moved to another spot and um, here I'm just showing you that uh, you do need to use a net to grab your bait from the main bait tank. And I'll just pause it right here we were doomed from the beginning. Look at the quality of that bait. It is so poor. The scales are falling off. There's blood all over the place. And, um, you know, the, the tuna just will not eat damaged bait like this. So we were kind of um, already working with a handicap. And what we were told was that the bait was already damaged even from the bait barge um, apparently you need to let these bait cure in the bait barge for a while since uh, when they do get netted uh, their scales get damaged um, out in the ocean and so when you bring them into the bait barge you want them to rest slash cure for a few days so that they don't have these bloody marks and you know their scales aren't falling off as you put the fish in the yeah. water so is this the experience that you guys have had as well for all those who have gone tuna fishing? Damaged bait just won't get the bite. So we decided to go closer to shore and as you can see there's a fleet of boats and um, there's tuna reported here. At this point I'm not really confident we haven't caught one fish this whole trip and as you can see all the bait is really damaged not giving much confidence and so we're nearing the end of our fishing trip and um, the water is slowly getting rougher we're letting out the line and again still no bites at this spot and so you can see a lot of the dead bait fish we put them in the water to chum the water and uh, it's kind of our Hail Mary here but nothing all defeated sucks so here are some lessons learned don't buy damaged bait don't wear gloves to handle the bait don't leave your bait out too long outside of the water and don't go far offshore if there are tuna close by. So if you remember just uh, about 30 seconds ago, you did see that fleet of boats. Uh, they were catching tuna. We weren't. Um, I think this had to do with both timing. So we got to the spot a little too late. The bite shut off. And number two, the bait that we used was just totally damaged and unusable. Um, I was quite disappointed at the end of this trip, but it was a great experience because we were able to sleep on the boat, go off 60 miles off the shore, and then um, fish for more than, you know, 12 hours. Um, so it was a tough grind. We had a lot of laughs, but also we kind of cried at the end there uh, without getting any other fish uh, other than that mackerel that Jen got at the beginning. Um, so there you go guys that's tuna fishing I hope you guys learned something in this make sure you follow like and subscribe